French captain Vendy Renard and her teammates Tiani and Katoto have announced that they're going to be stepping back from international duty. So, let's talk about it. Another day, another week closer to the Women's World Cup in the summer, which means, unfortunately, another controversy, another federation that's not willing to support or back up its women's national team. Wendy Renard, who is arguably one of the most successful players in the game, and you can definitely put her as one of the most successful French players, men or women, put out a statement this morning talking about how she is no longer willing to condone a system that's far from the requirement and needs to be at the highest level goes on to say that this is a sad but necessary step to preserve her sanity. It is a heavy heart that she steps away from the French team, even if this includes not going to the World Cup. Adds on to say that her face hides the pain, but the heart suffers and she doesn't want to suffer anymore. A few hours after that, Diani and Katoto, her French teammates, but uh, also a duo at PSG, announced that they are also going to be taking a similar step. What has gone wrong here with the French Federation? Well, before we start talking about the current situation, it's important to recognize that the French Federation and the personnel that they have hired have consistently and continuously let down the program and the women's national team. For the last decade or so, there's been at least a dozen of players that have come out and spoken about how the French Federation is one that allows toxic workplace culture. There's been multiple accusations of bullying misbehavior and sexism the point where these accusations went so far that the federation actually had to hire a consultant about these complaints and work with top uh, executives of the federation to figure out what is happening and, and in other ways to figure out how to really hide the accusations that are coming out Karine diacra uh, an ex-player and also an individual who marked history in france by being the first ever woman to coach a men's match was appointed to be the head coach of the french team in 2017 However, her huge knowledge and name in the sport didn't necessarily reflect positivity on the team. In the 2019 World Cup, she often joked about how she was a strict coach and that she doesn't have any fun here and the girls are, are very unhappy and she would often literally laugh about that with the media. But what was so not funny is the fact that this is actually true and a lot of players following this World Cup came out and echoed exactly what she said and said actually, you know what, we are very unhappy. She's come repeatedly under fire for her inability to maintain a positive relationship with her players and, and specifically in that 2019 World Cup it was quite abysmal what came out after it. Reportedly she would point the fingers at certain players as to why they crashed out as early as they did including threatening to strip the captain at that time from the armband pushing these players to step out of international duty but also because Kareen herself didn't call up these players due to just her having personal issues with them and simply not wanting to have them on, on her team. Kareen basically said if these players are willing to stand up for themselves and have a voice and talk about wanting better and wanting a good environment for them, well, I'm not going to choose you and you're simply not welcome in, into your national team. And those players that I'm referring to are Henri and Lossomere. Like, you listen to these names and you listen to these players, they are pioneers of this sport, arguably some of the best this era has seen a lot of this turmoil and negativity was shot pretty well by the federation obviously the federation are, are very powerful and kareen herself has very good ties with a lot of the higher-ups and the board of the federation and so she was backed up regardless of what was going to happen going into the euros of last year the french team was promised a conversation and kind of better promises that after this euros we're going to reconsider your futures and we're going to reconsider kareen as a coach they went on to lose the semi-final to germany but what the federation did is they renewed her contract up in 2020 24, meaning that she is going to be the coach to take them to the World Cup. Might I mention, this is a manager who has consistently come out under fire. This is a manager that has allowed very bad accusations to take place in her locker room. She's kept out talented players out of the squad purely because her ego feels hurt and is not taking a French team, which you can definitely argue are having a, a somewhat of a golden generation to any kind of successor, to any kind of trophy this only comes a week after the canadians women's national team threatened to go on strike after the federation announced funding cuts players were enraged they were unhappy new surface that they haven't been paid since 2021 now the federation is saying we're, we're gonna cut your funds and in fact if you want to strike we're gonna sue you we're not gonna pay you but we're definitely gonna sue you in a world cup here and this is the sixth ranked team in the world these are your olympic champions the seventh ranked team in the world, Spain, now have lost 15 of their best players for the same reason. They're backing up a manager that hasn't taken the team to any of its potential success. Vilda has been in charge in seven years and he has never taken Spain past a quarter final stage in a major competition. I just want that to sink in with you. You look at that Spanish roster, including those 15 players, 
it is a generation of gold. It's it is a, a bunch of players that are destined to reach gold. They've got a two-time Ballon d'Or winner for God's sake. They've got some of the best players in the world on their team that they simply don't want to back up and in fact they're more comfortable letting them out of their federation and reaching a deal that can meet both their demands. Those three nations, just Canada, France and Spain, combined have 11 players that were nominated for the Ballon d'Or in the last two years. And this is not a fight or a conversation that has just resurfaced or appeared now it has been going on for years and years and years and you often now are hearing the phrase enough is enough because enough is simply enough a lot of these players started playing professionally 20 years ago and they're still fighting the same fight to this day and what's even crazier and sadder is that a lot of the federations that do have their equity and their equal pay and are getting exactly what they deserve they had to go on strike they had to go and fight all these fights talking about australia having to strike the u.s had to go to court multiple multiple times and go through multiple multiple lawsuits to get a deal like this. You're talking about the Republic of Ireland ladies also having to strike a few years ago. You're talking about Scotland. You're talking about Wales. You're talking about, I mean, there's so many nations that have had to constantly strike and battle over this. And, and if things have to go to court, they're willing to take it to court. You talk about these prominent players. I mean, Ada Hagerberg pretty much led that Norwegian fight. She stepped away from international football. She stepped away. She missed the World Cup. And so players... I mean, you don't get many World Cups in your career, I don't think. And players are going to the lengths that they're willing to miss World Cups. Get a federation just to simply support them. This is happening in Nigeria. This is happening in Egypt. This is happening in Qatar. This is happening in so many other federations. And understandably, kind of the, the non-Western, non-European federations are struggling with different barriers. But this is an issue that's happening all around the globe. If you want to find out a little bit more about these specific nations that I mentioned and the cases that they have to go through, I've got plenty of threads on my Twitter at SheScoresBanger that really highlights and, and present very good articles that explain what the situation is or was. So if you're interested, definitely head there to read a little bit more because it does show that even the sport is growing rapidly and it's, it's exploding. It's such an incredible growth. There's still a lot of areas we need to grow. There's still a lot of areas that we need to fix. There's still federations that we need to make sure are backing and simply supporting their players. It's, it's bizarre that we've reached this point and federations are not willing to support. One of these main reasons, in my opinion, is that a lot of these board officials and board members are still stuck in a what I would call a conservative ideological headspace where they don't want to take risks. A lot of these TV deals, a lot of the demands to them seem a higher loss and a higher risk. How I view this is that you're actually putting yourself as at a higher risk of failing when you do this. If you've got Wendy Renard still playing for you, you're definitely going to sell more tickets. You're definitely going to be able to do more media collaborations. You're definitely going to be able to bring in a little bit more of that kind of like a fan engagement money. And you know what? When you've got those good players on your team, you actually have a higher chance of progressing in a competition, which means higher prize money, which means more money coming into your federation. Those three bullet points that I just mentioned are risk assessment. You assess, okay, am I really not willing to invest a single penny and I, I'm too scared of risk? that I'm willing to let away these players or I can actually hmm, think about it maybe if I do keep these players it's actually going to put an influx of money and actually if I invest a little bit that risk that I'm so scared of won't be there anymore but no it's a little bit of incompetence unfortunately at the higher level and it's a bit of we're too scared to lose money and it's it's an understandable worry sports you're not always going to be making money but also this is the same thing on the men's team not every single deal you're going to do is going to you know be a good investment it's it's sports you lose some you win some but you don't see the same thing being reflected on the men's team because they simply don't care to pour the money that they do which kind of bleeds into my next point and i hope this is not so much of a stretch but i, I think it's hard to deny that there's definitely institutional patriarchy and that kind of institutional misogyny built into a lot of these boards do we really want to see our women's team succeed is it really a story that we're trying to associate with their federation or should we put that money on the men's team because we want to see them succeed it's hard to look at these numbers and and again on my twitter i have been able to highlight a lot of these spendings on both the women's and the, and the men's national team it's hard to not at least glance at such a narrative and i think what's even more upsetting is this is that you look at the boards and you look at these people in charge 
at least there's a woman or two involved in it, which is actually a little bit more upsetting. In some ways, they could be like your token woman just to like, oh, we've got a woman on our board, which is understandable. That could very much be the case. But for example, let's look at Canada Soccer. At the time of the recording, they've got six women and their 14 members of the board, two of which were ex-players. And so you're looking at these personnel, you're looking at the experiences and, and the knowledge that's present on the board. Sure, they're overshadowed with numbers when it comes to, to men individuals being on the board, but it's like, how are you not supporting your players? How are you not supporting somebody you were in the position 20 odd years ago? The French team, I mean, they're managed by a woman who herself is conducting and allowing these toxic environments to take place. It bothers me more that I see women not supporting women or women specifically causing other athletes out of the sport. But what are their goals? What are the programs? What are their layouts? What do they want to achieve for the women's national team? This is what's so important to look at. What are the numbers that they want to bring in? What are the risk assessments that they're 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 considering? What are the con- consultation steps that they're taking? Yes, there's risk in investment. Of course, there's risk in spending money. You don't want to lose it. No federation wants to lose money. But how are you even going to allow yourself? How are you going to possibly give yourself a chance when you're not even spending a single extra dime to support basic demands for the players you're affecting youth you're affecting dreamers of of the future and and ultimately you're affecting the present which is not ideal but definitely share your perspectives and, and ideas and thoughts down below it's important that we get a conversation going because without a dialogue we might not get to a resolution it's important that we have conversations it's important we have a sharing of ideas as always to stay updated and to continue enjoying the beautiful game make sure you subscribe to me here on youtube and follow me on twitter i will see you later Thank <laughs> you.